Hello and welcome to this Astranti video. Today we'll be talking about ethics. Now, the SEMA Ethical Code identifies five categories of common threats to its ethical principles. These threats are things which could put someone at risk of acting unethically. It's important that a professional accountant should evaluate any threats to compliance and deal with them in a professionally appropriate manner. More on this in a moment. This is a topic which is examined in BA2 and BA4, but really it's applicable to all SEMA students, whatever stage of your studies you are in. This is an extract from chapter one of our BA2 course. If you want to view the full video, this can be found on the Astranti website, where all of our SEMA certificate resources can be accessed for free. But for now, let's jump straight in and review these five common threats to SEMA's ethical principles. So firstly, there are self-interest threats. And as the name suggests, this is any potential circumstance which might influence you personally and therefore impact on your decision making. So this can include financial interests and incentives, concerns about your employment security or the impact of a decision or action on your position, for example. Or it could be commercial pressure from other businesses. So, for example, you might be motivated to act unethically if you're given a financial incentive, a bonus perhaps for agreeing to leave key information out of a financial report. Now, self-review threats, again, are fairly self-explanatory. They refer to those situations when an accountant is expected to review his or her own work or judgments. So perhaps after reviewing a set of accounts, you spot an error you made in the past. You might be reluctant to highlight this if you think it has an effect on your current position. But as well as personal circumstances having an impact on professional judgment or actions of an accountant, there are also familiarity threats. And these arise when the accountant is so sympathetic to the interests of someone like a family member or a close work colleague that their professional judgment is compromised. And this could be a problem, for example, if a close colleague is a friend and you behave unethically, covering up a mistake in their work perhaps in order to avoid them getting into any form of trouble. Next, we've got intimidation threats, and this can refer to both actual or perceived threats, which might prevent an accountant from acting objectively. Say, for example, you're concerned that if you don't follow your boss's orders and overstate the profits in the annual reports, that you'll be threatened with dismissal or replacement. So therefore, you feel like you must follow this particular unethical procedure to preserve your position. And another issue might arise when an accountant feels extremely strongly about a specific cause or has a very strong opinion on a certain matter, for example, animal rights or equal pay, and this would present an advocacy threat. For example, say that you're a member of an animal rights group like PETA, but in your role, you're responsible for compiling the accounts for a company which is known to conduct testing on animals. Your advocacy of animal rights may affect your ability to be impartial and as a result you may be overly critical and sceptical when doing the accounts for this particular company. So you can see there are a range of threats that may impact upon an individual acting ethically and SEMA have outlined a number of potential safeguards to these threats which can be used by a business to protect its employees from each of these. And the first is establishing ethical and conduct programs. So having up-to-date and meaningful programs and information available to members that give guidance and advice on ethical issues. So this could be in the form of courses, talks, or online information, for example. Now, another safeguard is ensuring that the profession is adequately regulated. So having in place comprehensive regulations and guidelines, setting out expectations, and also presenting the consequences that individuals will face if they are to behave unethically. Now, even before an individual is recruited, an organisation can take steps to make sure that only the best candidates are able to work in the profession and thereby limit the risk of unethical behaviour occurring. So careful recruitment, having thorough and formal recruitment processes is another safeguard. 
And we've touched upon the next one, which is disciplinary procedures. So having clearly communicated repercussions for unethical behaviour, which might range from verbal or written warnings to financial penalties, dismissal from an organisation, or even legal action in the most serious cases. And finally, staff performance procedures, making sure that all staff are performing adequately by reviewing any issues that relate to both personal or professional conduct. An example of this would be if a member of staff reported a colleague to their manager for breaching a particular ethical standard, for example. That manager has a duty to review the conduct of the employee in question and take any appropriate action to address the issue. Now, having these safeguards in place is all well and good, but unfortunately there are some instances where it's not possible to reduce the threat to an acceptable level. So how can these situations be overcome? Well, firstly, the accountant should refuse to be linked to or remain associated with any information that they believe to be misleading. So say, for example, an accountant has been unknowingly associated with misleading information, perhaps by basing a set of reports on a fabricated data set provided by another colleague. Once the accountant has become aware of this, they'll need to take steps to be disassociated from that information as well as deciding whether there is a requirement to report the issue, perhaps even by considering legal advice. Now, on the other hand, if the unethical behaviour was solely the result of the accountant's own work or their own actions, then realistically they need to consider their position, whether or not it would be better for them to resign. And as SEMA has a focus on maintaining public confidence in management accountants, It deals with any complaints that arise due to the actions of its members, investigates each of these through its conduct system, and then, if necessary, imposes a suitable punishment, ranging from a caution to a monetary fine to complete expulsion as a member. So that brings us to the end of today's video, and you should now be confident in identifying threats to SEMA's ethical principles. If you want to view the full video, This can be accessed for free on the Ashanti website, where you can also find other study materials to help you pass your SEMA certificate exams. If you've enjoyed the video, why not subscribe to one of our social media accounts? We can be found on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, here on YouTube, where you can find a multitude of videos on a wide range of topics. Thanks for watching.